So how would you deal with this one in Excel? Let's have a look at the file now. What I want to do is I've got the home teams here in the Doggy Football League. I just want to get the venue from a list. And you can see on the list sheet here, we've got all the teams, all of the home grounds or the venues. I just want to display those in this cell. And you might say, Chris, that's easy. All we need to do is use a VLOOKUP. And I've got the VLOOKUP formula in here. But there's a bit more to it than that. And we've got our challenge here. Sometimes we need to overwrite an entry. We want to overwrite an entry. I've been asked to do this so many times on real world projects. You know, these days it's quite common, isn't it, for sports games to move venue uh, at the last minute. So we'd want to be able to do this, to overwrite an entry, but then for the other entries to retain that lookup functionality. How would you do this? How would you do this in Excel? I do it using the power of Excel VBA, particularly application.worksheet function. I can just click this auto button and you can see the values have gone in, but these have gone in as values. These are not formulae, so we don't need to worry about using the formulae. I'm gonna show you how to do this in the next five or 10 minutes, but if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel, Excel VBA content creator, consultant, and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you're wondering, what do I need to know in Excel? You're going to love my Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out for you. The things you need to know, and there's some secret videos in there about my Excel secret weapons. You just put your email in at the link below. That will be sent to you. So without further ado, let's get into the download file. As always, make sure you download the download file and work along with me. So we're going to effectively build VLOOKUP in Excel VBA. Let's start with the end in mind. This is what it's going to look like. Now we're going to go ahead and delete this code, but just take a second to notice what this looks like. Application.worksheet function allows us to access any worksheet formally from Excel VBA. How cool is, is that? So it's going to look something like this. We're going to have to rebuild this code. We're going to rebuild the formula in Excel VBA. Now that's a difficult thing to do because when we build a formula in the worksheet, we have all of this help and support. Excel tells us what it needs, the components. We don't get that in Excel VBA. So the first step that we have to do is build the formula in the worksheet. So what do we want to look up? We want to look at the home team. Where's the table, comma, where's the table array? I'm just going to switch sheets, control and page down on the, my PC, then control shift and right and down. So we've selected the whole table. Now hit the F4 key on the Windows PC, put those dollar signs in, that's going to fix the references. We are copying this formula down. Column index number, we want to return a value from column two. And then this is going to be zero because we're dealing with text discrete data. So now I can now go ahead, hit enter, hold down the shift key and down arrow, control D, take those entries down. And I can see this working. But the most important thing is we've just started working with VLOOKUP just to reinforce this. And as a reference, when we're in the VBA editor, I'm going to copy that formula, go to this cell, hit the inverted comma key and then control V. As a reference, we now have the formula. That's going to make it easier to build in Excel VBA. So I recommend this as a first step whenever you're using application dot worksheet function. So we can go to the VBA editor. You can go developer and visual basic. If you're just getting started with Excel VBA, check out one of our beginner series. There's a link below uh, this video. So what's our first step here? Well, we want to loop through these cells. Yeah, we want to go through these cells one by one and do something to each cell. How do we do that? Give you the answer already using a loop, of course. So I'm going to use a for each loop here. So dim Chris cell as range, declared a range uh, variable. We need the range variable to make the loop work. I've said Chris cell, you can use any name, your own name, John cell, you know, whatever it might be. Then I'm going to say for each Chris cell, which is the variable we've just created, of course, for each Chris cell in range. And then I need to be careful about the range we're working with. So what is it? E6 down to E15. E6 colon E15, then the speech marks again. So this is going to get us started with our loop. We've just opened the loop. We need to close it now so we don't forget to do it later. How do we do that? 
we say next and then the name of the variable one more time. So we've created our loop. Let's just prove uh, that the loop is working. So if I say message box Chris Cell or the name of your variable dot address, we should be able to prove that the um, loop is working. Going to hit the F5 key. And because we're, we're externalizing the address property, we're just going to go through this loop and Excel is telling us the address is when you get to E15 and then we're done. So we've got the basics in there and we always do that. We always do a little bit and test, but now it's going to get more difficult because we're going to try to use application.worksheet function. How do we get started? Well, we want a value to go into this cell so we can say Chris cell dot value. Now on my screen, I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so you have the best possible view. On my screen, I'm going to hit space and underscore. That just allows me to continue this line of code on the line below in the VBA editor. It's going to help things display better on my system. You don't have to do that. I'm going to say equals and then space and underscore application dot worksheet function here. Now I can uh, navigate down to it using the arrow keys and then hit tab. Just saves me a bit of type in there and then dot. And then we want VLOOKUP. Now we're using VLOOKUP today. You could use a number of worksheet formally. Other ones I commonly use with application.worksheet function, count if, match, and a few others. Not many, just a few. We shouldn't be doing all of the formally in VBA, but just a few can really help here and there, particularly with this particular case. So we've got to open the brackets. And now I'm using our, our little, how would we say, our little walking stick, something that's going to help us through this. So what's the first thing we want? Well, we need to reference the value that is in column C. So we're dealing with column E, we're looping through column E. How would we reference the value in column C? Well, here we can use a bit of a favorite on the channel, of course, offset. So if we say Chris cell the offset, we're saying move away from the cell we're in by a number of rows and a number of columns. How many rows do we want to move? Well, it's on the same row. We don't want to move any rows. How many columns do we want to move? Well, we want to move two columns to the left Therefore, we need a negative value here. So minus two will take us to the value in column C. So beagle for our first row here. So now we need to remember comma. And then I'm, once again, I'm going to go space and underscore to allow me to continue on the next line. I did warn you this is going to be quite difficult to put together. Now, what's the next part of our formula here? Well, it's the table. So we need to reference the table, but we're going to do this in VBA. So what sheet is the table on? It's on the list sheet, so sheets list here. I'm gonna go away for a second, I'll be back in a second, just so you can see the name of the tab there. Sheet list dot range. Okay, what range is it? So I'm gonna go into the worksheet here. So it's C5 to D24, C5 to D24. And you could, of course, go ahead and give that a name range if that made it easier for you. Okay, and I'm back. So we've got the first two components of our formula in here, as always, step by step. You know, that's there's no rush. You've got to take your time with this. Right, the third part is, well, I guess a bit easier now. We just need a two and the zero here. Two, of course, being the column from which we're going to extract a value. It's the second column in the table. So two and then zero tells Excel that this is discrete data. We don't want Excel to make ranges for uh, numbers or anything like that. So if we close this, is this going to work? I'm just going to click off this and it does seem to be working. Excel seems to be happy with that. So have we made this work? So what I'd recommend you do now is step through the routine using the F8 key. You can also go, go to debug and step into, let's go through it step by step. And if everything's working, we should, we should see the value stacking up in the cell, that's if we haven't got something wrong. If we've got something wrong, we can just debug. So Beaglewood Park has gone in. Cybrox has gone in. Let's go ahead and test this. So Siberian Husky, who are down here. Yes, they play at Cybrox. Yeah, very funny joke, by the way. I'll be here all week. There's a few jokes on here. Molly Newfoundland for Newfoundland. Any Wolves fans out there? And we can see, I'll shut up, don't worry. And we can see, these values stacking up here. I'm going to stop this now. I'm going to clear out the cells back to the worksheet. I've already attached this macro to this button. You can go to right click, click and assign macro to check. I can just hit auto now and I can see those values 
coming in. So what do you think about application.worksheet function? Have you got it working? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to download your Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out all for you. The stuff you need to know, don't need to know. You don't need, don't need to go to Google to find out stuff. I tell you exactly what you need to know. In your Excel cheat sheet, what do you think about application.worksheet function? The next video to watch is in the pinned comment below. I'll see you there.